Hello and I welcome you to UPSC Prelims Chaturya series of Shanta Lakshmi IAS Academy where we will be discussing daily prelims MCQs from the Hindu Indian Express and PIB. So let's get started. First question. Consider the following statements about Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act 2005. It is launched by Ministry of Panchayat Raj Statement 2. At least one third of beneficiaries have to be women. Statement 3. It is a demand driven scheme. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, one and two only, two and three, two and three only, one, two and three. So if you look at statement one, this is incorrect because MG Narega was not launched by Ministry of Panchayat Raj. It is launched by Ministry of Rural Development. MG Narega is launched by Ministry of Rural Development. Coming to second statement, at least one third of beneficiaries have to be women. Yes, statement two is correct. Coming to third statement, it is a demand driven scheme. Yes. So under this scheme, a person can demand work. If he doesn't get the work within the 15 days of demanding, then he would be compensated with unemployment allowance. So statement three is correct. Which of the statements given above are correct? Only two and three were correct. So option C is the correct answer. So we have asked this question with reference to a news article in the Hindu where it has mentioned that out of all states and union territories, only six, uh, six of them have completed social audits of the works done under the MG Narega scheme, scheme in more than 50% of the Gram Panchayats. That is only six of the uh, six of them of out of all the states and union territories, only six of them have completed the social audit in more than 50% of the Gram Panchayats. And Kerala is the only state to cover 100% of the Gram Panchayats. So this MG Narega scheme, that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act 2005 is one of the largest work guarantees programs in the world that was launched in 2005 by the Ministry of Rural Development. What is the objective of the scheme? So under this scheme, it will guarantee 100 days of employment in every financial year to adult members of any rural household who are willing to do public work related unskilled manual work. See here it is unskilled manual work not skilled manual work and at least one third of the beneficiaries have to be women. It is a demand driven scheme. Under the scheme a uh, rural adult should get work within the 15 days of demanding it, failing which unemployment allowance must be given. Coming to wages, wages must be paid according to statutory minimum wages, which are uh, which are specified for agricultural laborers in the state under Minimum Wages Act 1948. The act mandates that Gram Sabha uh, to recommend the works that are to be undertaken and at least 50% of the works must be executed by them. See, the act mandates Gram Sabhas to recommend the works that needed to be undertaken. Next question, consider the following statements. Statement 1, it is an annual festival celebrated in Dakshina Kannada district of Karnataka. Second statement, the festival involves traditional buffalo race. Third statement, festival is generally held from November to March. Which of the following events described in the above scenario? Option A, Jellikattu. Option B, Kambala. Option C, Kodi Pandalu. Option D, Vallam Kali. So the correct answer is Kambala. Kambala is an annual festival. It is an annual buffalo race held in Southern Canada districts, that is, it is held in coastal districts of Dakshina Canada as well as Uripi of Karnataka state. So, in this both these both districts, they will celebrate this festival. Along with Karnataka, it was even celebrated in Kasargod of Kerala. So, this Kambala season is generally starts in November and lasts until March. Kambalas are organized through Kambala Samitis. Whereas Jellika too. It is a bull taming event. It is practiced in Tamil Nadu. Then Kodi Pandalu. 
it is a rooster fight that is usually conducted in godavari areas of andhra pradesh next vellam kali also known as snake boat race it is a traditional boat race in kerala it is a form of canoe racing so kambala is an annual buffalo race held in karnataka jallikattu bull taming event in tamil nadu kodi pandalu rooster fight in andhra pradesh vellam kali a traditional boat race in kerala next question consider the following statements about investor risk reduction access platform the purpose of investor risk reduction access platform is to create awareness among retail investors in the stock market to reduce their risk exposure second statement it is it platform is developed by sebi which of the statements given above is are are correct only one only two both one and two neither one not two so both these statements were incorrect because this platform is not to create awareness and this platform is not developed by sebi so neither one nor two is the correct answer option d is the right answer we will discuss about this so this platform investor risk reduction access platform is jointly developed by all stock exchanges that includes bombay stock exchange national stock exchanges national commodity and derivatives exchange limited multi commodity exchange of india limited and metropolitan stock exchange of india it is not developed by sebi but it is developed by all the stock exchanges in india why to reduce the risk faced by investors due to certain technical glitches not to bring awareness so this platform is to reduce the risk faced by investors due to technical glitches so what is the need of this platform so with the increasing dependence on the technologies in the securities market there has been a rise in instances of glitches in trading member systems because of this glitches it has led to disruption of trading services and led to investor complaints so in those uh, instances investors would face a risk of of not uh, investors with open positions are at a risk of non availability of avenues to close their positions particularly if markets are vol uh, volatile so when there are when there are technical glitches in trading member system so these investors with open positions are unable to close their positions or to complete their pending uh, pending positions so this uh, this led uh, this made the investors to face a lot of risk especially if when the markets are volatile to reduce this risk we have come up with this platform how does this platform work first whenever a investor face any technical glitch at their end they can invoke the uh, investor risk reduction access platform on invocation the platform will send a link to the investors to access this platform once the investors are authorized to access the platform investors can complete the pending orders and close their open positions but they cannot open new positions they can only complete the pending orders and close their open positions but they cannot open new positions using this platform next question guru nanak's three principle consider the following statements guru nanak's th uh, three principles include contemplation of one god earning one's livelihood sharing one's earning with others second statement guru tej bahadur was a sixth seventh sikh guru who raised an army against the mughals and introduced the concept of warrior, warrior saints which of the statements given above is or are correct one only two only both one and two neither one nor two so coming to statement 1 guru nanak is the founder of the sikh religion his three principles include one believing in one god and earning one's livelihood and sharing one's earning with others so statement 1 is correct coming to second statement guru tej bahadur was a sixth uh, was the seventh sikh guru who raised an army against the mughals and introduced the concept of warrior saints so this statement is incorrect because it's not guru tej bahadur who introduced the concept of warrior saints it is guru har gobind singh who has introduced the concept of warrior saints 
and guru tej bahadur is not seventh sikh guru he is ninth sikh guru so uh, guru tej bahadur was not the sikh, seventh sikh guru and it has, he has not introduced the concept of warrior saints it's uh, guru har gobind singh who has introduced the concept of warrior saints so statement 2 is incorrect so how many of the statements given above is or are correct only one of them were correct option a one only is a correct answer so we have asked this question with reference uh, to a news article where it has mentioned that 24th november is observed as guru tej bahadur's mat uh, martyrdom day also known as shahidi divas so the sikh religion originated with the advent of guru nanak so guru nanak is the founder of the sikh religion guru nanak's three important principles are contemplation of one god that is nam japna and earning one's livelihood that is kirat karna and sharing one's earning with others that is vant chekna contemplation of one god a uh, one god earning one's livelihood sharing one's earnings with other are the three important principles of guru nanak guru tej bahadur was the ninth sikh guru he was not seventh sikh guru so this uh, guru tej bahadur sikh guru uh, guru tej bahadur singh was born in amritsar and he was a father of 10th guru that is gobind singh Guru Tej Bahadur stood up against the forcible conversions by the Mughals and he was executed by them on the orders of the Aurangzeb in the 1675 whereas Guru Har Gobind Singh has raised an army against the Mughals and introduced the concept of warrior saints next question with reference to e prime layer consider the following statements a new mysterious layer called e prime layer as formed on the outer parts of earth's mantle second statement this layer developed because surface water penetrated deep into the planet changing the composition of outer region of earth's mantle third statement e prime layer carries significant implications shedding light on the interconnected geochemical processes that link surface water cycles with the earth crust how many of the statements given above are correct only one only two all three none of the above so the e prime layer is a layer that has formed on the outer part of earth core on not on mantle so statement 1 is incorrect how this layer has developed this layer has developed because of the surface water penetration into deep into the planet and it has changed the composition of outer region of the earth core not mantle so second statement is also incorrect coming to third statement e prime layer carries significant implications and it shed lights on interconnected geochemical processes that link surface water cycles with earth crust this statement is also correct because it shed light on the interconnection interconnected geochemical processes that link surface water cycles with earth core not crust so statement 3 is also incorrect so e prime layer is all related to core region of the earth not ma neither mantle nor crust it is related to core region so how many of the statements given above are correct neither one uh, no, uh, all of the above statements were incorrect so option d none of the above is the correct answer so according to a research conducted at the advanced photon uh, photon research of argon national lab and petra 3 in germany a new mysterious layer called e prime layer was formed on the outer part of the earth's core how it has formed because of the penetration of surface water deep into the planet and it has changed the composition of outer region of the liquid metal core so this water has uh, the surface water which has penetrated into the uh, low, into the inner regions of the earth has changed the composition of the liquid metal core 
scientists has observed that chemical reactions has taken place at this layer when subject when subducted water interacted with the core materials under high pressure so this interaction has re uh, resulted in a creation of a distinct layer in the outer core it is characterized by so this e prime layer is characterized by high hydrogen content and low silicon levels forming a film like structure so this altered core layer that is e prime layer has a significant implications it will shed light on the interconnected geochemical processes that link surface water cycles with deep metallic core so by this we are concluding this session i hope this session was helpful to you thank you